shot. <laughs> I told you. Oh, God. So, I've had myself a delightfully grunge rock coffee cup. wine. I'm a bit uh, buzzed listening to the Radiohead in this very retro shirt given to me by an ex-girlfriend of sorts and uh, probably in the hopes of me never getting laid again but I wear it with pride nonetheless. So it's a new decade. Ten years of movies have happened. And I've compiled a list of thoughts in the last ten years, 2010 to 2020 or so, A film. I was prompted by The Witcher, of which I'm about to finish watching the first season of. Now, there is a critic out there called The Critical Drinker that brought this to my attention and got me thinking along those lines. I always give credit where credit is due. But I'm going to go into this direction, more of a social commentary than a criticism of a specific film. So, what I've noticed with, with stuff like the uh, Game of Thrones, and I suppose I'm not going to just be talking about film, I'm going to be talking about television as well, which is what's kind of replacing film, oddly enough. So anyway, films like Game of Thrones, Again, series like Games of Thrones, that, and, and The Walking Dead have in them gratuitous sexiness. Same thing with Spartacus, Blood and Sand, just gratuitous sex everywhere. Just lots of hardcore porn. <laughs> it's, um, I think it's part of the, part of the zeitgeist of showing the, this is what human nature is really like. It's shocking! It's so dark and depraved. It's basically like Hobbes, the philosopher Hobbes. The nature of man is short, brutish, something to that effect. Or the life of man is short and brutish. Well, it is, according to the series which take their inspiration as much from Hobbes as they do from the Marquis de Sade. And basically what all series shows seem to want to do is to demonstrate their deep understanding of psychology through gritty murder, court intrigue, and hardcore porn. <laughs> I, I really can't get over how much sex is everywhere. It's, it's just, I'm not a Puritan by any stretch of the imagination, but this is just downright gratuitous. We all have internet connections. We can state our needs in that way, right? <laughs> I don't. I don't need porn in my fantasy. Okay, and in terms of dialogue, now, now witty banter, having a bant, is all well and good. But that is the whole of dialogue. On top of monologues on the darkness of human nature. That's all that there is. Basically, those two things. And there's the remakes and the nods to past series. It's all just a giant soup of something that foreshadows the apocalypse. It's interesting because the early 2000s, with the Y2K and stuff like that, I recall everybody who thought that the world was going to end and then they get it 2012 and it didn't. But even those times, in the early 2000s, films were marked certainly by brooding, as per their just brooding atmosphere in Swordfish, and in Dogma, and in The Matrix. But there was also an element of hopefulness, and a sort of kind of wholesomeness, not just depraved sex and showing that when tough times get tough, people really begin to act like this. You know, in the past, there was just fucking orgies everywhere. Ah! I don't know. 
And, and all this seems to me uh, like it's, it's, it's geared toward the Starbucks latte crowd of suburbanite assholes <laughs> who sit there with this world weariness like oh they've seen it all and they really they really haven't it, 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 it's a way to kind of raise themselves above the fray by saying ah well I'm enjoying this bit of biscuit because you see I've suspected these things for a long time and here it is portrayed and how how this would play out if it was medieval times and there were dragons coming to destroy my kingdom and tits tits everywhere. <laughs> oh fuck off. Yeah. Yeah. And instead of directors, what they decided to have is jaded stockbrokers. Speaking of jaded stockbrokers, I kind of noticed everybody behaving in this way with all of these entrepreneurs and things. Everything is about the bottom line. And that's, that's, that's what's behind all this remake nonsense. It's like, oh, it's a proven concept. That's what the Critical Drinker was talking about. You all have all these medieval fantasies starting with, I guess, Lord of the Rings and then merging into The Witcher and... Um, Game of Thrones, actually, before that. And, oh, let's just beat this horse to death because it's working and it's what the people want and it's how we'll make our money. Now, granted, there is such a thing as, like, genre and wanting to work within a genre because you enjoy it, but at the same time, there's a certain level of corporate, just, cynicism that uh, sort of emanates from the nature of a film of television series in the past decade, you know, since I need to give an example of a film that you're talking about there is The Dark Knight, which I thoroughly enjoyed, but you see, you can do that thing just once or twice, and, and that's fine, but they just keep doing it over and over again, it's all this, oh, the humanity is so dark when they get put on a corner, ah, sex, granted the Batman thing didn't have that much sex, which was very refreshing, very refreshing indeed, very low key, um, in the sex department. Now, I'm gonna take that jaded stockbroker thing a bit further. I think I tried to do it a little bit earlier and then I got sidetracked. So, have you not noticed this shit? Like, you're talking to people and they have this air about them. I get to the point. Like, and it's not just to me, because you could you could be watching this video and be like, well, you're a rambling idiot. Of course people want you to get to the point. But no, no. It, it's it's this, this cynicism, this preemptive cynicism from people who have no right to be cynical because they've grown up their whole life in a cushioned fucking suburban bubble. And I don't get it. it, it, it it's, it's bizarre to me. It's bizarre. And the reason I call them jaded stockbrokers is because a lot of them have this idea of themselves as entrepreneurs that are, that have a nose, that have a nose for the reality of the situation. And that's why they're going to make it and tell you how it is. And it's often accompanied by fanciful beards. Ugh. Ah. I think I was going to say something else, but, but I really can't be bothered. So, I hope you enjoyed this babble. If you like it, I have a website where I babble somewhat more coherently at times called FractalJournal.com, where you'll find stories, ideas, and more. Go forth and check it out, give this video a like, or call me an asshole. Either way is fine. Thanks for stopping by, and cheers.